What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Picked up a new project, but I picked this one up because I was throwing away a project or I was getting rid of majority of a project. You remember the um, uh, Sunny V, the solar power truck I picked up. We made one video of it and I, then I made like a uh, YouTube short where we were driving it and I flipped it. And um, I only purchased that vehicle because I had a special motor and a, a controller in it. And I can use those for a different project. And um, while I was at the scrap metal yard throwing those away, I ran across this gem. Literally, it's a, it's a gem. And I don't know anything about gems. I've never owned one before. I've seen a bunch of them lifted. I've even seen a couple of them lowered, even bagged. I thought it was kind of cool. I, I know nothing about this. Nothing at all. I don't know if it runs. I don't know if there's something wrong with any part of it. Uh, while I was there, my son picked the camera up. And he caught me looking at it. And I got back in the truck and he was like, let me guess. New, new project for the channel. And I said, you're exactly right. I said, I've never had one of these before. And generally, these things go for a lot of money in my area, even non-running. But I picked this one right here up for $300. So I went to the scrap motor yard. I hauled off a set of batteries. I hauled off a set of scrap from that other um, Sun EV. And I gained $100 from it. And then I went and showed them a picture of this in the office. And I was like, we'll take $300. So I came out of pocket that day on $200, really. $300, but... It is what it is. Now the main reason I chose this is while I was looking at it, I seen it had an aftermarket motor. Let me show you exactly what I found. While I was looking at this, I noticed that the motor was blue. See the motors on the front here? And generally a blue motor is a telltale sign that it's an aftermarket D&D motor. Then I noticed it had like vent holes here. So I knew it had to be aftermarket. I cannot find the controller and the charger because I say the charger because well up front it's got like a onboard uh, charging receptacle here or that's where one was this front body here is cracked not sure if we can fix that or replace it I'm sure we can replace it we might be to fix it too especially for the money I have in this $300 you know I'd like to maybe play with this thing and, and do something with it I've never had one of these on the channel Pretty sure these are 72 volt uh, vehicles here and it's not a golf cart it's a lsv for a low speed vehicle so yeah even like the windshield the windshield is missing a couple of bolts here to hold it in place now for a little walk around here uh i do not have the ignition key switch that goes into place there i don't even have the key for that opening there little glove box I'm pretty sure from looking on the line in the past that there, there's a motor controller and maybe a charger and the cylinder and everything behind the dash here. We'll have to figure that out. We'll have to see about the ignition switch. We might just have to take this right here whole column assembly apart. And if it's just got two wires and it's just a switch on and off, we can just connect those together for the time being. These seats here, they're... They really need some WD-40. They don't want to slide very well. This was up when I got there. Has some hubcaps in here. No batteries, obviously. $300. But, you know, the person may have scrapped this right here because the batteries were just so expensive. I didn't want to replace them. But after I seen that D&D motor, I was like, man, we can, we can really do something with this right here, maybe. But that's where some of the batteries go. This is the back portion. This is the E825. Now the rear end here is sort of like a two-link where the uh, pivot points is only on the front and not the rear. So I think this is the older model gem. So, but hey, you get something for $300 can't beat it it's got brakes in the front and rear it looks like drums in the rear it's 
used to have like uh, I've seen them online. I have like a little cover here. I've even seen like a little truck beds, little storage compartment. Uh, it's got all of that. It's missing. I guess that's what this right here is for. Yeah, that's to release that. Regular lights. We could do the clear tail light mod on this right here as well. It's got Velcro here, so I wonder if that window here was like a solid window or if it was a just like a you know like a flexible vinyl window. I'm not sure. The sunroof is intact. It has your handles on there as well. Not exactly sure what these are for. Maybe it was some type of door or like an aftermarket door or something. Because it's got these snaps like here. Your brake assembly, your accelerator pedal. On side the on the column itself, you have a gauge. It's got your seat belt light, brake light, uh, lights on and off, wiper on and off because it has a wiper arm there. Feels like a regular uh, glass windshield. Turn signals. So, yep. Then you got your four neutral and reverse button right here. And you got a turf and a road mode. So I think that's kind of like a low and a high. We'll be able to find a lot more of that out here in a little bit. I did notice it has hydraulic brakes on there, which is pretty cool. And it looks like they are just about as dry as they can be. And that's probably going to be why this right here doesn't have any brakes but for three hundred dollars did we go wrong so i guess we're going to start working on this right here and uh see what we can do i know the first thing we need to do is to pump this tire up here it keeps going flat so it was flat at the place they pumped it up for us we put it on the trailer and it's flat again so we're going to pump that up so we can roll it away No brakes. Hope it doesn't hit the fence. It probably will. This shop is a mess. I have stuff everywhere. I have review videos that I have told people I need to do. I still got parts of the Sun EV truck over here. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. This is from the Sun EV truck. This is why I kept it. This motor here isn't your typical golf cart motor because it has a keyed shaft on there. It's going to a belt drive, acting as a jack shaft and going as a chain. It has a uh, peerless, I think it's made by peerless. It's a differential axle on there. So you go around turns. This is one of the main reasons I scrapped the Sun EV. I just wanted this motor here. I wanted that rear axle and the chain, but we can make go-karts and other kind of things with it. I have something in mind and well, if we can find what I'm looking for, well, it'll be on the channel, but if not, I'm just gonna have to leave you hanging there because I haven't seen it done yet. And reading online, this dash is supposed to just slide up. I haven't tried it yet, but Let's try that. They said it's Velcro, but I don't know. Okay, it is Velcro. All right, well, there's the dash and it's off. So we have, looks to be a contactor, maybe a light flasher or a buzzer. A lot of wiring harness. Um, oh, the spider scared me. I ain't gonna lie to you. This looks to be a ride for fun. This says green charged, yellow charged, and red discharged. I'm sure this may be a charger of some sort. And I guess this is the controller. Here, okay, I don't know what kind of controller it is. I guess that's just a stock controller. I'm not sure. Like I said, I've never owned one of these before, so I can't tell you about any of this stuff. And there's a cover on this side. Maybe that's just a cover to solenoid and things, and I guess no cover over there. 
This is going to the brake here. I guess that's a brake switch as well. The accelerator. So, not exactly sure, but that's what everything looks like there. Steering column, U joint. Yep. So the internet was right about having this stuff here. But um, I guess the main thing is let's put a 72 volt battery in the system and see if we can get any kind of a power. I guess before we do that, we need to go ahead and take this right here, call them apart here because this key switch, I didn't get a key for it. Got it from the scrap metal yard. And um, yeah, we need to see about turning this right here on or off. There's one more bolt down here. I can't get to it because of this bottom dash piece here. So far, I've only seen three bolts holding that piece in. Maybe that's the only thing it's gonna to take to remove that. I'm not sure. First time I've worked on one of these. That's a 10 millimeter bolt, or it takes a 10 millimeter socket. Oh, that's simple. That was very simple. Get this bolt down here and just unscrew off. Those little uh, screw bolts are very, very tiny. Nothing broke. I'm shocked already. So here's my ignition switch and it's got like a little plate here and this plate sits behind this piece of plastic and those two uh, screws went through this outside piece of plastic housing into that piece of plate to secure that um, tumbler in place but it's just a regular two wire setup one wires already came off of here not sure if that might have been the problem to begin with. It may have been just not working. I don't know. But, as you know, some people don't like to take stuff apart and they don't like to find out on their own. So, anyways, I guess we don't have to use this uh, tumbler here. We might can use something different, but it might not fit back into this right here. Housing or not, I'm not exactly sure. But we got that off. We can actually go ahead remove that switch there we can use these right here wires i'm only pretty sure that the only thing they're doing is making uh, continuity uh, to turn this right here vehicle on and off so i just looked online the first site i came to showed an ignition system switch here and it was like 150 dollars for this and the only thing it does is make continuity which is crazy i'm not paying that you know we'll do something different i'm gonna go ahead and cut these right here off strip the wires back and we can use this as a switch for the time being before I go any further I'm gonna take this front hood piece off this fascia piece it's being held on with these straps right here it looks like maybe the the hinge system on here uh, isn't on it anymore maybe that's broken maybe somebody did this but I'm tired of it constantly falling I can just put it out the way and um get that so what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove those straps next bolts holding that on two different sizes i'm pretty sure that's just aftermarket we're just gonna chunk this this is the extension cord that plugged into the front of the body and uh, you'd plug an extension cord into the front of the body to, to turn the charger on to charge the batteries let's try to put extension cord into here and see if that charger turns on at least okay there's a light on there just says zero. I got a red and yellow blinking light as well. So at least we know the charger will power on. So I think before I take this back brace off, there's going to be two bolts going into this uh, portion of the frame, two going into the bottom and one going into the body here. It's like a big L bracket just to give this right here some uh, support. Uh, this back here looks like it fit four 12 volt uh, deep cycle batteries 
going in here. I'm not even sure if we're going to be able to put a big battery 72 volt Falcon in here or not. So before I do that, I might try to connect it to the one up front. We do have positive and negative. If we can connect it there just to see if we can turn uh, the unit on or off. So that'd be great. I think our problem is this wires there. That's our problems. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go dump this right here out real quick. All right, we can see the serial number now of this motor. I'm bringing it down here to show you exactly what we got here. Here's the motor. You can see. As a 170-501-0002D, 4950, 72 volt. This looks like a, it says ride for fun up there as well. So maybe this was part of a uh, motor kit or a performance upgrade or something because this is a D&D &D motor here. We'll YouTube this or we'll Google this right here number here in just a little bit and check it out. That's exactly what we have there. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit this battery up here, connect it, and see what we got. Okay. So we have voltage, 79 volts from this battery. I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not. Put a little spit on there, clean that thing up good. Oh yeah. Not getting anything yet. Nothing forward, nothing in reverse. Nothing in lights. No horn. So, anything on the pedal? Nothing on the pedal. Nothing at all. Probably need to get a voltmeter out and start checking some voltages. I might even get a, try to find a schematics. I usually don't like trying with schematics at first because, well, I like to see if I can do it on my own. But if you're a schematic type fella, then you might want to do that as well. I just got a bunch of different plugs down here. And like I said, I've, I've never messed with this right here type of vehicle before. So not sure if it was scrapped because it didn't run or because something came unplugged or something somebody did not have something properly installed but that's what's fun about this so yeah we'll get a voltmeter out and we'll check some things out so i'm gonna start at the battery because it's saying it has 79 volts let's make sure there is 79 volts going there um i'm not sure if you guys can see this or not um Oh, got it in the unfused location. My fault. In positive and negative. So we're getting 78.7 volts at the battery to these two cables here. Now they look like they're going inside the vehicle. Let's go in the vehicle and, and see. That's those two cables going down there. And one looks to be coming here. We can check continuity here to that one cable, and that's probably your positive cable. And then the other cable is going down into this loom, probably going to the back. That's probably exactly where. Let's check the continuity of the positive wire. All right, so we have continuity between those two wires. Now we're gonna need to check continuity between the ground wire up front by the battery since this used to be a series. Since they use, I think two batteries went up front, four went in the back, six times 12 is gonna be 72 volts. That's exactly what's gonna go on with that battery cable up front. All right, so I got a alligator clamp here going to the negative battery post on the battery. Hopefully we can have enough room here 
to check the continuity back here. See if that's the same cable. And it is. And as you can tell, the, the ends are very corroded. All right, so that's sweet. So that was the main negative that went to the back. Then bring it back in closer. Then this was probably the, the last negative back here. This was probably the first positive. The first positive probably went over to this battery. Then this negative here went through a switch that you could turn the battery uh, on and off with. You have positive, negative, positive, negative, and then you had this one right here. So I believe we're going to need to connect this negative here and this positive together because I believe this positive here is going to go to the battery or to the controller ground. That's the next thing we need to do is check the from continuity of this positive cable here to the controller ground. So we need to check continuity on the controller B negative side here, which is this side. Okay, we need to check continuity there to the cable in the back. So I'm alligator clip running down. It's attached to my lead. There's my multimeter. I'm gonna have it coming over here and we're gonna try to attach it right here to this side of the cable. Now I could just start hooking these things together, but I don't want to fry anything. So that's why I'm just wanting to test everything beforehand. All right, that's, okay, so that's continuity. You hear the beep? So we have continuity between, this is the ground for the controller. I'm a lead going there because we know we have uh, uh, continuity between here and the positive on the front. So let's see if we have voltage between this right here wire. I got it running to my multimeter back here. And we're going to check voltage ground on this one right here. And if we have 72 volts, then we need to clean these and connect them together. All right, let's see what we got here. Look at there, 78.8 volts. So that means that we need to connect this positive and this negative together because basically it was just coming in here and connecting batteries in series. We need to send that current straight back up front to the controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean these terminals off, get a bolt in there and just bolt them together real quick and put some black tape on them. Now before we connect these together, I'm gonna go and turn the switch off on the dash. All right, got it bolted together. I'm just gonna put some black tape on there to protect it. All right, black tape's on. Nothing like breaking a tripod to get a shot. Hashtag YouTube struggles. So we're gonna do this. We got it in neutral. We got it in low mode. I'm not sure if anything's gonna turn on. All right, we do have power on the clock here. It's got a wrench. It says negative four for some reason. I'm gonna have to look some codes up. Like this again. All right. Let's see. Oh, that scared the crap out of me. I think that's the cylinder we just closing. All right. So I was looking at some of this stuff earlier. We have a controller. We have a charger. We have a solenoid. We have a flasher that's got to be the reverse beep so this has to be a dc to dc controller maybe but all of these small wires i would only think that's that's what that was we do have a fuse up here we probably need to check that but then it should work unless i'm not saying it should we need to check the continuity of that fuse as well and this cable is going up here. And oh, there's a, we got some fuses. Let's check some fuses here, see if we have any bad fuses. That leg was already bent, so I guess I guess that's okay. 
Um, we can call that tripod Lieutenant Dan. All right, got a meter, put it over here. We got it in continuity settings. Now we have a continuity settings. Let's check these fuses here. See if we have anything that's bad. It's good. 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 Not sure what went there. Um, let me just get like maybe a five amp, put it in place there and see if anything else happens differently on the vehicle. Okay, I have a five amp, I'm gonna put back in there. I don't know what goes in there and I don't wanna put like a 10 or 20 or anything like that. And um, I just wanna put something regular in there. Like I said, I don't even know what, if anything goes there or not. All right, got our wires hooked back up. Still getting uh, negative zero four on the wrench. None of the lights are working. Still know it's not even working now, uh, even though I have the wires connected, but I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is jump online real quick and see if I can find any kind of schematic code since I'm just working right now off the hip. And uh, we can go from there. See, I'm not even getting a DC converter. It's not turning on or anything, so. All right, so the 04 is still there and I just went online real quick and I just, you know, searched Jim Car dash 04 and it says the brake, parking brake. Well, there is the parking brake right there. And this entire time, guys, I did not even think to look down, but it's up. It says there should be a switch on the parking brake itself. It might have come out of adjustment. If we release the parking brake, if that 04 does not change and the solenoid should not activate if the part brake is up that's kind of what i was reading so let's see so breaks down and we still have a, a negative zero four i wonder if we disconnect this and connect it back again We're still getting it. Let's pull this brake apart here and see if there's a switch in there like it's talking about and see if maybe um, that switch is stuck or something. So went ahead and I pulled all the wires. Went ahead and cut the ends off of them. The ends that was on the wires were very corrodious. Went in and stripped them back to some clean wires. I was using this right here, alligator clip. To match those, still getting negative 04 here on the cluster. So we're gonna check some more things, see if something else isn't wrong. After getting down here, looking at this right here box, I don't know if that's factory or not. I don't know if they did that on all of these. It looks like somebody tried to waterproof it or something. I don't know. I don't think that's stock there, so. All right, so I went and took the screwdriver, busted out all of that silicone there. All of this was on here, cross it. So looking at it now, um, this buzzer wire here is coming in, going right over here to these two terminals. That one red there is going into this harness here. And that harness is going to the fuse block and this ground here is going to there. This is, unless it's getting this ground from the aluminum chassis behind it. Uh, I'm not sure about that. That might be the case. But if our batteries aren't grounded to the chassis, then there shouldn't be any ground there. I'm thinking about running that ground that was going to that piece or on the chassis I just showed you. I'm thinking about running it down here to this ground here of the distribution block of the battery so we know it has ground. Let's do that. All right, so I went ahead and ran those grounds right there through that alligator clip to the battery negative on the distribution block. 
that's where it's going to. I've got the uh, switch in the on position right here. Okay, you see that? Next we're gonna do is, I'm gonna join this white green wire with the green. Try that first. The controller or the solenoid just activated. Look at there, we're getting all zeros now. Okay, we're making progress now. Uh, let me try to tie these two wires up together and uh, I'll pick it right back up. All right, so the meter is going between all zeros and 100. All right, was well, there it is, 100. Maybe that's battery life, maybe that's miles per hour. I'm not sure. I have been Googling this right here car a little bit, so I can't say a whole lot. It's in neutral. Give us some acceleration. <gasps> Got on turf mode. Okay, let's go forward. Let's go in reverse. I have no brakes. It's moving though, that's crazy. Yeah. I have no brakes. Um, it's moving though, what do you think? That was in turf, this is in road. I'm not sure what that means. Hope I don't go flying through the wall, probably won't. Uh, okay, yeah. You can tell the, uh, the road mode is probably like a high speed and the turf is like low speed or high and low. Hmm. Yep, that's the way I feel. Um, I'm, I'm happy so far. You know, circuitry, it's like a big light bulb. You know, it's a series, it's ins and outs. So I'm not sure if this ground had anything to do with it. It had to, because before that ground was there, when we hooked these two wires down here together, nothing would happen. So, I, I, you know, I. I was sure to put that ground on the battery ground there. Like I said, let's put it back in gear, or uh, turn it back on again. The battery or the solenoid just activated. Forward. Not sure why it's doing that. That, a lot of that could be in the throttle, it might be dirty, so it's causing the throttle or the potentiometer in there not to uh, accelerate, kind of like an M-Core on a club car, uh, you know what I mean? So we might have to end up taking this right here apart and see if we can clean it. I'm not sure, we might have to replace the entire thing, but we do know that, hey, we can put it in reverse, the solenoid will activate, and it moves. Should we drive it right now or not? I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna just disconnect it real quick. All right, guys, not gonna lie. I'm gonna do something probably kind of stupid. I'm gonna try to take it on a block one time. It doesn't have any brakes, but um, I don't have any brake fluid yet. And um, if I do, I might add some, see what it'll do. Uh, the brakes may need to be rebuilt or something. Uh, this, probably, this thing probably needs to all go over this, but while we have it in this right here running condition, let's just see if it'll go around the block. This is such a weird view, but... Kind of noisy as well. That motor's noisy. No brakes. Brakes probably need to be rebuilt. Maybe that's the speed. It says it's going 10, 11. And that's in turf mode. I 
Look at all of this. I do have a little bit of brakes. Like I said, I got up to 21 and I got kind of scared. That's where we flipped the uh, Sun EV. You just hold this right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up here and and uh, turn around Mark, with you it. Want me to focus? Now we're recording right now, right? Yeah, that's fine. Just tell me. You're fine. You're fine. I'm going to just hot wire it real quick here. And the gauge is on. I'm going to. I'm gonna go in forward since I still don't have any brakes. I don't know, I just uh, lost power or something. It just quit, it's now it's saying negative eight, negative 11. All right, so I uh, got back out to the garage, went inside, uploaded all the files, and um, for the video, grabbed a bite to eat, did some researching as well, and I downloaded a uh, fault guide. I guess those are like a code guide. It's coming from the, um, the gauge right there. And it's saying that the uh, eight is something like a high pedal disable or something to do with a pedal. So I'm thinking of taking a pedal out the um, out the floor of the golf cart and uh, going through it, maybe try to clean it up as much as we can, see if we can get rid of that code as well because it was driving just fine, but then that happened. So it's always something, no big deal. Something else we can work through, guys. Nothing to it, just do it. Let's grab it and growl. This is the pedal wire going over here, coming out down here. Um, we might have to go up underneath the vehicle and loosen something up to get the pedal up off the floor so that's what we're gonna do next so I just got underneath the uh, the gym car and I was looking at it actually there's like a bolt or screw going straight from uh, up here down so you got to be able to access it from the top side but there's no bolts or anywhere around it other and there's a bunch of dirt I wonder if there's dirt inside of this or something but you have these hinges here and I don't I was wondering if maybe we could take a screwdriver and push that in uh, one wonder if it goes all the way straight through wonder if it's just two little small hinges that will just catch this outside I'm not sure yet, but um, You know, I think that's the only way we can actually see the inside I hope I don't ruin anything by this But um, there's only one way to find out and let's just grab it and growl I might as well record this because if I ruin it, I want you guys to see what I'm doing maybe hmm? Let's look at the other side did that go all the way through or what? No, it didn't go all the way through. Wonder if that's wonder if it just pops off like that. Oh, okay. So this right here is just a cover. It's got a instruction guide down here as well inside of this cover. Uh, that's your hinge there. Wonder, wonder if this, wonder why it doesn't retract far. It should just automatically retract for you. Hmm. Wonder if this belongs, I don't know. I'm gonna have to figure that out, I reckon. Because if you press it down, it's not going to return by itself, and well, I don't like that. All those three wires look good. We got one wire going on here to ground. That looks good. Two wires going to the switch right here. Hmm. I'm going to have to figure this right here out, but everything in here looks good so far. All right, guys, this is my theory. I could be wrong, but... Okay, since the throttle here is on both sides 
of let's just say the seesaw or this pivoting point here when you push this down it will stay down because the spring is in the up position but if the spring was down and this pedal cover was on these two nipples on the side then this would push the pedal back up in returning pushing the back portion down and the front would not be uh, down as well so that's how the spring works that's the only way it can work and it looks like we just have a, a simple switch down here and just a resistor of some sort or a rheostat or whatever you call that but um, there's six wires total a green wire is going to ground blue and orange is going to uh, the switch there and you got red white and black going to resist uh, not resistor but the potentiometer not a rheostat potentiometer and that's all it is to it if you think about it so that's how that switch works is when this cover right here is installed and you push the accelerator down this spring is going to lift it back up but once it lifts it back up the back portion back here is going to push um, the acceleration portion down, which is causing the um, potentiometer to rotate. And the gears that are on this right here device are not stripped here. They're pretty good shape there. So, and that's causing that potentiometer to rotate. See? So yeah, if anything, potentiometer could be bad or that little switch right there could be bad. Went ahead and jacked the front of the gym car up uh, for this next step here. Turned it all on. Wheels are off the ground. I'm still getting a eight reading here, but as soon as we uh, hit the switch inside the pedal, changes to 11. So this right here is the pedal uh, adapter. I followed it up here. I disconnected the connector there. And I've got some, looks like some black tape and some other things. I'm gonna unravel this and see if uh, any of those wires are loose or anything. Maybe we just need to reconnect them together. I'm not exactly sure just yet. Sorry guys, I'm starting to get ahead of myself. I got to put the camera up. Just getting into this mood of, you know, trying to figure something out. Went ahead and there's a flathead screw holding this right here entire unit in place. Went ahead and moved it out the way. Gaining access to this little switch here. I wanna check continuity between the switch to make sure it's still working properly. And I also need to check continuity between this connector here and all of these wires to make sure um, that uh, there's not a break anywhere. So I wanna do that as well and um, look at it again. So here's the deal. I traced every single one of these wires from this connector here down into the box. Nothing is shortened out against anything else. Everything has continuity. The blue has blue wire continuity, the, the orange, the white, the black, the red. All of it has continuity all the way up here to this connector. So I just plugged it back in. As I was messing around with it though, the gauge went directly back to that location there. And you can put that in place. I can turn the, uh, the solenoid off here or that portion of the drive there. So all of this is fine. Maybe it's just dirty, corroded from years of sitting. I'm going to try to clean it up the best I can with what I have on hand. And... So it's a running car. So really what we need to do now is uh, put it all back together and uh, take it for another test drive, but that's what we have. I got the pedal back assembled again. Here's the only thing that I can think could go wrong with this pedal so far. What possibly went wrong, I'm not sure. 
So this right here portion of the pedal, which mounts the, um, what do we say this was again? Not a resistor, it's a potentiometer, sorry. Um, mine blank or mine freeze or whatever. You have two bolts, one right there and one back there. And maybe this right here slid back enough that um, the pedal was dis disengaging the switch here, but not turning the potentiometer or vice versa. Because I didn't do anything special to it other than rotate it a few times and well, it's back working again. So not exactly sure what's going on with that. While it's in the air, jacked up still. Let's test it one more time before we take it out again. And for some reason, if I leave this, if I take it out of turf mode and put it on the run mode while the car is off or in neutral, it's a buzzer, maybe it's warning you to take it out of the road mode. I'm not sure, but Ford, Neutral, Reverse, I'm going to put it in the road mode real quick, Ford, and it goes directly to number six for some reason, oh, Ford. That's in road mode and road mode reverse. So I'm gonna put it down and take it for a ride again. Just when the shop gets cool enough, I'm gonna open the door, carry this thing riding again. Can't win for losing, but I hope you guys are enjoying the content so far and um, Let's take it and let's see if this thing will run again. So there it is, guys. We are uh, we're driving it. Seems to ride fine, you know, as far as what it is. Um, I think the high pedal disable has, so there it goes again. It's like, as I was driving it, the pedal just switched out. Not sure why, but the pedal just get back into it. So maybe it's just having to work get some bugs back out or maybe it's like the, uh, um, the potentiometer is dirty or something. I don't know. It's like, not sure why. I don't want to go far from the house because it's already left me stranded once today. But for testing purposes, it's not bad. And right now I'm still in the turf mode. So standard right now 13 14 and there it was it just it quit again that off the pedal push the pedal back down and you're good to go again not sure why it did that far I don't know maybe somebody with some gym experience will tell me what they might know could be wrong with that I don't know I'm looking for suggestions but it is what it is Yeah, that's what we got. See, when it, it did it again. Okay, once I hit the accelerator, it goes again. Now, what's going on with this is I'm riding and then the pedal will automatically just kick out. Like right now, there's, I'm getting negative 11 right off the pedal. Get back on it. That's good to go again. So. Not sure what's going on. Like I said, maybe it's just dirty and it's having to work its way back out. I don't know. Anyways, that's, that's the gym. I had some uh, DOT3 brake fluid put in there. Nothing happened. I'm going to drain it out, maybe in an upcoming video, and then we can uh, bleed some brakes again. But got the big battery. 72 volt Falcon sitting in there. Uh, this right here is powering this entire unit right now. And um, it's just one battery. I have a discount code with bigbattery.com Fentertainment. Save 10% off your lithium purchases, whether it's 48 volt, 36 or 72. 
Or if you need something for the house, you can save some money there as well. But there we go, guys. So maybe I need to adjust the potentiometer in the pedal so it doesn't uh, do a high pedal disable. That might be what's causing that issue. But there it is. It's like I can get it to stop a little bit but it's not perfect still. Well guys, there it is. It's, it's not perfect, but in today's video, we've, we've made progress. We've got it running. I'm not even sure if I'm on camera, but uh, yeah, it's running. We got today's video running, and uh, other than that, semi-success i'm happy with this um i don't know maybe next video we might start working on the brake system or the low voltage side of the system here but that's it for today's video guys i know nothing about gym cars still other than what i've downloaded today which was some codes that this uh, meter here gives you and uh well we figured some things out like share comment subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one Bye.